Alright guys, well, it's May 5th today, and we've actually, we've actually ended up having very nice weather. We had a lot of rain scheduled for the last two weeks, or chances of rain, and most of it has went around us. So we are actually, <clears throat> we are actually getting fairly dry, and there is quite a few guys doing a lot of stuff. I'm not quite ready, I have a few parts for my corn planter I'm waiting for. Or for my planter, I should say, I plant corn and beans with it. But we are, we are almost there. If you guys got some stuff in the ground, the one big farmer has uh, a good majority of his ground, a good majority of his corn put in the ground. But that's fairly normal for him. He he's pretty on top of it, and ready right away. Unfortunately, I was delayed doing a few projects and just getting things ready as I'm, you know. Not as, not as established and trying to do a lot of other things while I also farm as well. So we are running up to a field to check. This field was, it's a sand and gravel field, but it was, it was mined. And so it in turn tends to be very, very wet. I think I need to go on the other end. But anyway, so we're going to check this field out. This is one of my north fields that is part of my sand and gravel, although this one has been mined, so it's not quite as good. And it's mainly just because of how low it is now compared to the rest of the terrain or even the road. I just pulled off the road. There is a... There is a probably five or six foot fall from where I am to the road. Maybe you have to get out into the field a little bit more okay to the road there is that much of a drop though you can't tell that in the video but right across the road the ground is flat with the road so this this side of the road has been mined this field has been mined the sand or the gravel was taken off of it you know i'm assuming it still is pretty gravelly ground it's just that it's lower than the other ground around it and the road and so a lot of the water pools and runs to this area anyways the back of this area, the back of this field is, is actually very dry. So I have around 90 acres up here in, up north I say, and uh, it's, it's these fields are actually kind of in town. It's kind of interesting. Probably 60 or 70, probably 70 acres of it is very, very, very dry. So no issues whatsoever, but there's about, there's 10 acres here and there's 10 acres at another spot that can be pretty wet and it's because both those fields have been mined. So I'm checking this out right now. The Both those pieces have to be tilled that I just talked about and the rest is going to be no tilled. So I'm checking these pieces. I wanna see if I can till them. If we can, I think there's rain tomorrow night. I don't think my planter parts are gonna be here till tomorrow mid morning, midday. So we probably won't get up here, but I, I might try to come till this. Not 100% sure, we'll see. But anyway, we are coming along fairly well. We're a little behind the A game, but really, I mean, May 5th, this is very, very early. Last year, I started planting May 12th. The year before that was May 14th, and those were early years for us where we're at. We're very close to Lake Erie, and because of that, our, you know, we just don't, we don't get the heat like southern ohio does or more south of us we get a lot of precip off of the lake and so we just tend to be we tend to be slower starting but we've actually had a really really nice stretch of weather um and then part of the issue was too i've been i've been going out trying to do a bunch of early spring where a lot of the guys just went right to disc and plant um i'm trying to really work on my weed management and my fertility management this year because I feel like a lot of I I feel like I lost a lot of yield to both of those last year. And so this year on a lot of the acres that I either knew were very weedy or two I knew I wouldn't be getting to for a while, I went out and put a pre-emerge down. So I, I went out and sprayed 250 acres early with the sprayer and tractor that is available to me to use. I essentially I plant my neighbor's corn, and because of that, he lets me use his tractor and sprayer. You just can't get a ton done. You can't, you know, we're, I'm doing good if I can get 50, 75 acres sprayed a day. Or if I had a self-propelled, which I'm 
potentially looking at getting you know i could easily spray two or three hundred acres a day anyways we'll see about that but i've been so i've been i've been out spraying uh, trying to get some pre-emerge put down trying to get some early burn down on just to try to help us out later on because one thing i will say the la last year and this year both we've had very mild winters and even early springs and so we had a lot of growth coming in in february and march and if you're not going to hit that ground till the end of may without putting a burn down or without trying to kill weeds it is going to till up very very hard very hard and most likely you will have to do a lot of chiseling to even get it broke up anyway so i've been trying to get out and do a lot of early spraying i've been doing that the last four or five where like i said there's a lot of guys who've been just going right to discing and a couple guys planting but so hoping the best case scenario my parts come tomorrow morning. I can get a, uh, there's a field out by the home farm and I'm going to try to get planted tomorrow. And then we come up here north and plant all these tomorrow and plant all these fields tomorrow. That's best case scenario. That's probably most likely not going to happen because I don't think I'm going to get my parts first thing tomorrow morning. And the other thing is that would say everything goes right and I'm able to plant a hundred acres. And that's very possible. I had several days last year. I planted a hundred acres, but it's not really the norm you know so anyways oh one other update we got the 1466 which i was hoping to plant this year with i now have the versatile i'm going to till with so i was going to plant with the 1466 to alleviate the 886 off of the planter and not work it as hard as i as it as it was being worked and i was also going to run saddle tanks on my 1466 to be able to hold more fluid to be able to plant more in one fill up well we got it out and i kind of noticed this sound last year but <sighs> like ah, well ever since i put the rops on that tractor which is the rollover the the roll bar and the canopy ever since i put the roll bar and the canopy on the you get a real bad howling sound well it's it's vi it's <laughs> It, the, the noise from the transmission is going coming up the rops and you just hear it a lot worse. So ever since I put the rops on, it's been much louder. But last fall, it was kind of getting a little louder and you're just kind of like, eh, maybe that's just the rops, you know, make it a little louder, right? Like, <laughs> oh, great, you know. Well, it wasn't. So I thought I was losing a final drive bearing. We tore it all down, which I'll show here in a second. And... Or sorry, we didn't tear it all down. We pulled the dual, we pulled the dual hub, we pulled, uh, had to pull two or three sets of wheel weights and pulled the wheel off and the final drive bearings are not bad. So we do now think that it is either up in the transmission or up in the pinion housing, which is where the brake assembly is or the inside of the brake assembly. So to be able to get to that, we have to pull the ROPS off. Long story short, it's getting to be a big job it's getting too long. I need to plant corn. So we're going to hook the 886 up to the planter and get to work. The only downside to that is I'm going to be putting 10 gallons of my nitro, or sorry, of my fertilizer I have, which is either 31818 or 315193. I'm going to be putting 10 gallons of that in furrow and then three quarters of the inch off the seed with the furrow jet. And then I'm going to be putting 15 gallons of nitrogen, 28005, two by in two by two. So the problem with that is I only have a 250 gallon tanks on the planter. So I'm only going to be able to plant 10 acres with every fill. I was really excited to have the saddle tanks to be able to plant around 30 acres in a shot or in a fill. But we're just going to have to uh, deal with not being able to do that. And so that is the biggest thing with with uh going to liquid that guys kind of complain about or, or or don't like is the time consuming part of filling the planter well i was trying to get it set up so we didn't have to fill it that that often i think let's see i think i can get 12 bags in my planter for corn and so that plants you times 2.5 that plants you 30 acres so if i had if i had the saddle tanks on a tractor on the 1466 and could plant with it 
I could plant 30 acres worth of fertilizer and 30 acres worth of seed. So I'd plant that, stop, fill the planter up with seed, fill it up with fertilizer, and get going again. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case, at least to start this year. But things could be worse. I at least have another tractor that I can put on that is available to use to plant with. So I'm very excited about that. So going to be working on getting the 886 hooked up today. The 1466 is very unfortunate. We're going to work on fixing that kind of in the interim. We got rain for tomorrow, for tomorrow night and the next couple days after that. But like I said, it's been missing us. So it very is po it's very possible that we may not get anything. You know, you kind of get in those trends where like, we, we see this all the time. We've seen this time and time again in the last 10 years. You know, you get into this trend where it's like, oh, 30%, pff, we're not getting anything. And then you'll have other years where like 30%, we're going to get hammered. And we're kind of in this trend where it's like, oh, there's a 40% chance of rain tomorrow night. Okay. It's probably not going to rain. Anyways, I don't know that. We don't know that for sure, but that's kind of the trend we've been in recently. That could change at any minute, but that's kind of the trend we've been in. So anyways, I've kind of been jumping around a little bit here. <laughs> Just trying to give everybody a, an update of where we're at. Like I said, going to check these fields up here. See if we can till them either later today or tomorrow. Going to try to get the planter ready to be able to plant tomorrow other than the last few parts I'm waiting on for that. And maybe potentially plant some tomorrow. That would be great because I feel like I'm getting a little behind. I'm really not. There's only a couple guys who've done anything really in the area. But I just... I just would like to get some seed in the ground. Anyway, I do not want to push it, get mudded in per se, and then, all oh, it's horrible because you just didn't do it right. So I'm, I'm a big believer in doing it right. But the conditions are actually getting very, very nice uh, today as we've not been getting a lot of rain. Anyways, back to the fertility. I talked about the spraying a little bit. I am putting down 10 gallons in furrow, and that is essentially my complete fertilizer plan. There's lots of reasons for it. And again, there's a lot of guys who still use dry, not saying that liquid is the end-all be-all or the silver bullet. It's just what I have found to work for me or what I am finding or what, what I am bound and determined to find to work for me for several reasons. One of them being... You can, you can get different qualities of liquid. It's really hard to find different qualities of dry. There's just not really too many different types or different qualities made. Also, I can't take any dry fertilizer on hand. We have all of our liquid fertilizer on hand right now. Have had it since the middle of April. And I just like the idea of being able to get it and have it and not have to rely on somebody else come the day when I want to plant. So we're putting down 10 gallons of either 31818 or a 31519.3 in furrow. When I say in furrow, I have furrow jets or I'm, they're going to be on the planter by the end of the day. Three quarter, so I'll be putting, I'll be putting uh, liquid fertilizer right in furrow and then three quarter of an inch off the seed. And I'll show you those so here are my furrow jets I'm going to use. This is an actually a, this is actually a sparrow one I have. I bought uh, 12 and only need eight, but I got the extra four just in case I needed one or here, one or two here or there. So this is what this is what is going to be happening, or this is how I'm going to be applying the fertilizer. So you have a center discharge and then to the two wings, and so it goes through the soil. And the good thing about this is too especially with no-tilling, is it helps cut the sidewall to be able to break the sidewall down. So and then also there's a mini firmer, which I'm holding on to at the front of it as well. So this is a pretty nice unit. It's going to allow a lot of flexibility in the for the liquid fertilizer and should be very, very nice to have this year. So one port in the center and then one on each wing, which is three-quarter of an inch off of the center and the seat. I'm going to be putting five gallon right in furrow and then five gallons in the wings of the furrow jet to get 10 gallons all together. The guys that I deal with, they don't want you putting over six gallon in furrow. You can, you can start affecting the germination of your seed. And the reason why we can even go six gallons in furrow is because this is a no salt fertilizer, no salt fertilizer at all. A very, very high quality fertilizer. And that's why we're able to do that in that in furrow. I will be putting, depending on my soil test, I've taken 
I've taken soil tests on almost every field I have. We'll be putting copper, manganese, zinc, boron. Well, sorry, sorry. Let me back up. In the infurrow, we'll be putting manganese, zinc, copper. I guess that's all. I'm pretty sure. Then in the in my 2 by 2 I'm going to be putting down 15 gallons of 28005. So that's where I'm getting my sulfur from. And then I'll also be putting in boron, and I'll be putting in a nitrogen stabilizer to help prolong that 15 gallons. So, again, all of that, the rate, well, the 15 gallons and the 10 gallons, I'm going to pretty much stick to. But in the, 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 the nitrogen, I may vary some depending on if it's a really, really poor field that I don't know if it's going to do very good. I might back it down to 10 gallons. On any of my fields that I think are going to produce halfway decent, they're get, it's getting 15 gallons. And then again, all the micros are going to vary depending on the soil test and what it needs. Almost, I can tell you right now, just from my soil samples and, and soil samples from guys around, every one of my fields will be getting boron and a very, very heavy dose. And I say a very, very heavy dose. You can only put so much down or it's recommended to only put so much down at a pass so i'll be putting it down on my infro i put actually a pint down with my burn down and then i'll be putting uh probably a quart quart and a half with my side dress roughly yeah so i'll be putting a quart to two to a quart to two quarts in with my planter two by two i put a pint down with my burn down and i'll be putting probably a quart down with my side dress or sorry, every one of my side dresses. My goal is to do two side dresses on everything. <sighs> Potentially three on Summit. That probably won't happen. Yeah. Good to have a goal, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'm doing for my fertility this year. I've been doing a lot of studying, a lot of research, and that's kind of where I've come to. One thing that's very important with micronutrients, if you've made it this far in the video... They have to be 100% chelated for them to be readily available to the plant. So when you're buying micros, you need to make sure that they're 100% chelated. And the, really the only way to do that is to actually buy it and have it tested. I send all my stuff to Midwest Labs. I get retainments of everything I buy, and it all goes to Midwest Labs. You, your micros need to be 100% chelated for you, for you to be able to use, or sorry, well, for the plant to be able to use... 100% of that product. And the problem is there's a lot of companies who make micros where it might only be 15, 20, 25, 30% chelated. Well, that other 70 to 80% is useless. The plant cannot use it. All it's going to do is get tied up in the soil and it will not be used by the plant. It is not readily available to the plant. So that is something that's very, very important with micros. And let me clarify... It can say chelated on the side of the of the jug and only be 15, 20, 25% chelated. It does not have to be 100% chelated to mean, sorry, to say chelated on the on the side of the jug. And then going back to the my fertilizer, I'm using a very high quality 100% orthophosphate phosphorus so that that is readily available to the plant. And that is very crucial when that seed is is just sprouting, just germinating, and getting getting going. I'm using a potassium hydroxide and potassium sulfate for my potassium, and they're very very high quality as well. Again, no salt, so that uh, we do not hurt the seed or the germination. And those those are, again are very readily to the plant, readily available to the plant. <clears throat> So that when it's very young, it can take off and get going. We will also be using a seed emergence aid. Curious to see what that's going to do this year. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff I just threw at you guys. But that's kind of where we're at. We're, we should be getting started in the next day or two. We did a little, fit and, we did a little bit of uh, tilling for a guy that I farm most of his ground. He does some hay and... He wanted to reseed a hay field, so we we he he plowed that, and then I I dissed it down for him and got it ready to plant or sorry ready to seed, and then he seeded it. So the versatile and disc is all ready to go. We, we were able to use that; that was nice. It's ready to go. Planters should be ready to go tomorrow. Hopefully, we're going to start hitting it hard. Hopefully, the weather continues to cooperate with us. And yeah, it's uh 
it's been a pretty good year so far. Things have been going pretty good so far other than the 1466, but you'll have that time to time. It's no big deal. We'll, we'll get around it and keep going. So, yeah, we're going to check this field out, see if it'll be possible to be able to fit later today or tomorrow, and then we're going to go work on the planer and get that ready. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to see how planning goes, and we'll catch you in the next one. Oh, and here is where we're at with the 1466. All right, so we got it tore down to this point. We thought the final drive bearings were bad, but we've tore it apart, and they're actually fine. There's no slop. They're still all good to go. But when you spin the axle, and I'm hoping it makes as much noise, or I hope you can hear it as much as it's actually making, so I'm pretty sure it will pick it up very evidently. But that sounds really bad. We've narrowed it down to we think it's coming from in here, which this is the brake assembly right here, but on the inside of that is the, the pinion shaft, and we think that there is something wrong with the bearing on the inside of the pinion shaft or the gear on the inside of the pinion shaft. So we were trying to take it apart, but long story short, the ROPS is going to have to come off. So the ROPS, fenders, and all that is going to have to come off before we can tear into this or into that at all. So we got it to this point. It is not going to work. Hi, Jace. And we're just holding off on this for right now. I ain't going to get busy planting, but we're going to have to tear into that. Um, tear. But we're going to have to tear into this uh, quite extensively to get it fixed. But here's where we're at with it.